Hey, everything's free in Colorado. You know how it goes there, land of the free. Legalize it. Yeah, Denver Nuggets come back in. And they come back in really strong in this bubble. We talked about the Portland Trail Blazers in my last video. Go check that out. Like and subscribe, please. Check me out. Support the channel. But I want to get into the Denver Nuggets real quick and what has happened with this team. I think is probably the, one of the stronger front courts in the NBA. When we talk about season time off, three months or so, as I mentioned, that's really the time period where guys get to improve. If they had access to a court, some of these guys have gotten better because of this time off with the virus. But now we enter into a team that was already scary and dangerous with what they originally had that gets even more deadly from a front court perspective and it's going to make it a pain in the ass to have this many long, strong, athletic players on one team. The team is the Denver Nuggets. As we look at these guys, it's quite simply to see the guys that have returned. I'm going to go out on a whim. I, I told you, Bo, 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 Bo is back. First game in. Go look at my videos. I know you've doubted me. I know people have been, you know, slighting me. I made some Orlando comments and they go, bah, bah, bah. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Check out Bobo. 15 points in the first game, okay? In the scrimmage. 15 points showing, doing exactly what I thought he would do. He is basically a creative player on NBA Live. It is what it is. 7 2 long. He will gain a little bit weight as he ages. He doesn't need to gain too much. He'll lose to some of the agility that he has. But tremendous game from Bobo. Another stretch four that's long that could possibly give you a few seconds, a few minutes at the small four position, which makes it very interesting for Mike Malone on how he plays with this team. Along with Bobo, let's not forget, let's not forget the return of Mike Porter Jr. 6'10", 218, number one player out of high school. Didn't have a great uh, college year because of injuries. Got himself healthy. Looks strong as I see him come back. Can shoot the three. Can can get his uh, get his way off the dribble, which means he has one on one game. He can create for himself. I like I like Mike Porter Jr. The two young guys are something special and X factors if they can get these guys going. Now let's go into scoring punches. I, I wish they made another move. J.R. Smith was some, somebody that I thought fit in perfectly with this team. To get another short shot shooter on this team would have been amazing. And I thought he would have fit in much better than he would on the Lakers. However, the Lakers decided to pick him up. Um, and, and, and that is what it is. But you still got Jamal Murray. You still got Gary Harris. I think I thought you need to update that, that position. Uh, and then they brought in Troy Daniels, who looks pretty good during the summertime. Haven't really seen him. On a serious note, uh, from a game perspective, but from what I saw, he's solid. 6'4", solid, solid guard. You know, AC Law-like, okay? Then we get into Torrey Craig. Again, another defensive acre. Has time in the summer. If he's improved his three-point shot, which that that area where I think they need help, it'll be exciting. But one guy that's going to have to really kick out, and one guy that I've seen has truly improved himself with amazing athletic genes. I mean, his father dreams of having athleticism that Jeremy Grant has. Jesus Christ. If you think about a, a Stromile Swift, Tyrus Thomas type leaper, in my opinion, then you add on to it a jump shot and some handles. Jeremy Grant is just in a situation where he can't shine. He's definitely a starter in the NBA. And in my opinion, if given the opportunity, certainly an all-star. He's gained a jump shot. He's been able to put the ball on the floor, as I mentioned. And truthfully, he's a prototypical new age power forward, actually forward, that I think is going to do damage and probably will be their third option after, after Jochik and Mr. Jamal Murray. So it's exciting to see a guy develop. Then we bring in old man Millsap that's been doing his thing forever. Consistency is key. A guy that can still give you 14 and 6 on every night consistently. You know what you're getting there. And then you got your defensive anchors. And Mike Mason Plumley, a tremendous leaper, an athlete, a guy that also has been able, through the summertime, been able to get a little bit of his handles up to put the ball on the floor. Never really had a jump shot, but 
I'm excited for his defensive capabilities and rebounding. That's why he's there and he's doing his thing. So they want to add it on. They wanted to add on some help for Mr. Plumley. They did that. Noel Vonley comes in. Another one of more my more exciting players from Minnesota. Played in New York, probably had his best season in New York. He jumps over to Minnesota to do his thing, and then he gets kicked out and he moves over, excuse me, traded, traded over to Denver where he gets the opportunity of a lifetime, and I think he fits in perfectly perfectly with this team. He needs more minutes, however, in a, in a, in a chance situation where you're trying to chase a championship, which this is what it is for the Denver Nuggets. It's up in the air. You play your role, and I think Noah will fit into that. That is a scary front court. Porter Jr., Vale, Mason Pumley, Jochik, Paul Millsap, Jeremy Grant, and Bo, Bo, Bo. Add on to it the one, the with a three D three and D guy, Tory Craig. It'll be interesting. You also get uh, Kata Bates Diop, who I think can be a, a, a great defender. Uh, but again, as I look at this lineup, and I kept talking about it, Jamal. Yeah, Jokic can shoot a little bit, but Gary Harris has to step up. And Mr. Will Barn will have to finally show some consistency for this team to make it to the next level. I did see some play of Tyler Cook in the summer league. Again, pretty strong, burly player. Uh, looks like he can play defensive from a defensive end, guarding some bigger guys, getting some rebounds. Uh, pretty good effort from Tyler Cook at 6'8", 255. And I haven't seen Vlatko Konkar yet. However, he's another 3 and D guy from what it looks like. Not really a sharpshooter. P.J. Dozier, one of the handlers, one of my favorite handlers out of college, has really never gotten the opportunity. He signed. Let's see what he can do. But again, they're a miss on three-point shooters. Right now, they're going to rely on Jeremy Grant. Yeah, he can shoot the three. Mr. Um, um, Gary Harris and Jamal Murray. And I don't think that's enough. Hence why, why I said they need to add something. Okay, I know Monte Morris is there as well. Right, Great backup point guard. But from the guard position, I don't think there's enough firepower. There's not enough big hitters on a 6'7", 6'6", front uh, that have a 19 to 20 point a game uh, ability. Okay, That's my opinion. I'm going to stick with it. And in the end of the day, Denver Nuggets enter into the playoff race. They may have the easiest time forward if they st- stick to their particular lineup and they don't, they don't change their records that far as continue to climb and try to get into a Lakers-like position. At this time, they are the scariest team that you can deal with in the playoff hunt. And I'm excited to see them. All for sports, I'm going to sign off. Boat, boat, boat. I'm out.